This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio based company based out of Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasoning packages such as this Just Send It, which consists of the SP Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked, or the Sweet Heat, which has the Four Horsemen, the Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned, or the Whole Hog, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off extra your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company based out of Toledo, Ohio. Perrysburg, more specifically. Uh, all of the coffee you order there is roast to order, which means they don't roast it until you order it. It sounds simple, but it's not. It, it makes all the difference in the world. You're getting the freshest possible coffee. It's not sitting in a warehouse. It's not sitting in the back of the grocery store. It's it's roasted. It's shipped. It's sent directly to you with no middleman in between. You're getting the freshest possible coffee. All of it fair trade certified, USDA organic. K-Cups are available, gift cards are available, and free shipping over $50, and you can subscribe and save if you find that one coffee that gets your heart. So all of that and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube and Discord? Happy to see we actually have some people in the uh, in the Discord live listening right now as uh, we're, we're currently counter programming the Browns game, which. Admittedly, not the smartest move on our end. That's a uh, that's our bad, but <laughs> I'm glad everyone is here. Yes, a bold move indeed. I'm glad everyone's here regardless, and uh, it is appreciated. All right, Kyle, um, anything else for our YouTube or or Discord audience or should we get right into it? No, well, let's let's get into this episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right here, Jared. How are you on this lovely Sunday? Oh, I have uh, I have no complaints. We're uh, we're we're gonna this is gonna be this is gonna be a forward looking episode. We're officially in the off season and uh, no no use in crying over any spilled milk of previous weeks. We are now in this week and it's time to start looking forward. And that's what we're doing. We're looking forward to a new season. And uh, can Ohio State come back better than ever? Mm. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing really interesting after after the loss of the national championship game, how quick the vast majority of Buckeye Nation was ready. He's like, all right, well, let's see what 2021 has. And just really just kind of just focused just right away. We had a day kind of absorb what happened and then it just seemed almost just like in an instant. It seemed like everybody was already just ready to move on from that game and ready to see what's going to happen here in 2021. Yeah, and that was a, a brief discussion you and I had based off of, I want to say Sean Brawley's question, but off of someone's Ask Sloopcast question where you know they essentially asked us, is it better to get your butt kicked in or is it better to have sort of a heartbreaker like you did at the end of last season? And you never want your, your butt kicked in. And I'm not suggesting otherwise. But the good news about getting your butt kicked in is that you don't spend the entire offseason. What about the pass interference? Or not the pass interference, the uh, overturned fumble. And what about the targeting call? And what about this? And what about that? You, just, you don't have to play that game. It's just like, oh, we lost. Because like, even if you keep Sermon, then it, I don't think it matters. And even if you keep this, or even if this doesn't, it probably in the end isn't enough to actually change it. So we're, we're, we're just taking that game. We're putting it on the shelf and we're, uh, we're starting a new season. And that's what we're doing here today. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
But all right, before we get into the football, because that's going to be the vast majority of this episode, let's let's talk a little bit of other news here. So uh, probably the biggest announcement um, regarding the Buckeye Nation doesn't really, well, in a way it could have affected Buckeye, could have. Um, the Buckeye kind of football does. team. But uh, Urban Meyer officially now taking the head coaching position over at Jacksonville now. Yep. Uh, I, I will be, I will definitely be one to say, just come up here on this episode and say, you know what? I, I did not see Urban Meyer really pursuing or even thought about him being an NFL co- um, coach. Yeah. But here we are. And, and he's taken that with the first um, overall draft, which I, I thought it's funny. There's a lot of, people and comments out there about oh i think oh, that's a question we ja- have in our jacksonville is gonna jacksonville is gonna take justin fields now <laughs> uh, that's a question in our ask sloopcast so we'll save our thoughts on that for later all right um, um but yep Ur- urban meyer thankfully isn't really going after really any current ohio state coaches yeah uh, he does he does take ryan stamper with him which is a loss for Ohio State, and I, and I don't mean to suggest otherwise, because uh, because it, it absolutely is a a loss for Ohio State to lose Stamper, but he could have taken a lot more people, a lot of people in the Buckeye organization very close to Urban Meyer, and it's also worth noting that Stamper was so good at his job and had been doing his job for so long that if Urban hadn't taken him, someone mm-hmm. was going to take him eventually. Yeah, he, who's just the guy who was due a promotion. So it just sort of is what it is. But yeah, that's that's the only member. That's the only current member of the Ohio State staff that he's taking with him to Jacksonville, which yep. I've been trying to tell people was going to happen for weeks. Mm-hmm. Urban Meyer yeah. cares yeah. about his because uh, all sorts. Oh, he's going to take Pantone and he's going to take that. And I'm like, no, he's not. He's going to take mm-hmm. Brian Hartlock. No, no, he's not. Mm-hmm. He cares too much about his legacy at Ohio State. and He wasn't going to burn that. Yep. But he is taking former Ohio State uh, co- assistant coach Chris Ash to be part of assistant um, defensive coordinator, I believe you mean. Yep. Um, well, it just says as a position coach. I don't know if it's been finalized. Yeah, if it's defensive coordinator or position coach. Well, I, I believe no, I believe it's a I believe he's going to be coaching the defensive backs. Yes, is what okay. I saw. I, I don't know if that's 100 percent confirmed. Yep. And also finalizing the deal, Charlie Strong. Yep, Charlie, Charlie Strong, and the other hasn't been finalized, but looks to be that he's also going to bring on as his defensive coordinator, uh, former Falcons head coach Raheem Morris. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm person. I, I I saw a very 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 small percentage of Ohio State fans who. Sort of sounded like Florida fans after Urban came out of retirement and started coaching Ohio State. Very small percentage, but I'm no, I'm 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 good with this. I think Urban knew that people wouldn't respond so poorly to him going to the NFL as they would if he had taken a college job, which I think is at least part of his motivation for taking said college job. Yeah, I also think that he wants to repair his legacy in the state of Florida. I think he still cares about Florida a lot. I think he cares a lot about the fact that Flor- people that the people of Florida see him as a what, what whatever derogatory word you want to put here. And I, and I think he wants to repair that. And I think that's also part of his motivation. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. But that's enough Urban Meyer talk. Uh, do you want to do you want to do the next item in the notes or do you want to save that or do you want to get right into the meat of the show? Uh, well, well, we'll talk about basketball team. Basketball team, since last we talked, played two games, uh, Northwestern and on the road against Illinois. Ohio uh, State come out with victories over both both games there, 81-71 against Northwestern and heading on over to Champagne, Illinois, <laughs> beating the Fighting Illini 87-81. Yeah, a couple really nice wins for Ohio State, especially the Illinois game. Uh, You know, Ohio State got off to a really nice lead there Mm -hmm. and uh, almost looked like they were going to give it away at the end. Uh, Mm -hmm. Illinois just sort of chipped away, chipped away and chipped away at it. But Ohio State holds on and and picks up the W. Yep. 
That's that's all that matters at this point. Uh, so for the rest of this week, Ohio State will be hosting Purdue, and then heading on over to Wisconsin this Saturday. So Tuesday, five thirty against Purdue. Saturday against Wisconsin at four o'clock. Okay, Kyle, it's time to get into the meat of the show. In this episode of the Sloopcast, we will be doing an impossible task. Are you ready for the impossible, Kyle? Is it fixing college football? That that's that's a different episode. <laughs> that's a different episode, Kyle. Uh, no, we're going to attempt to make a prediction about a thing that won't happen until September, which makes it kind of impossible. Too many variables to really deal with at the moment. But we're going to attempt to predict the September depth chart, the week one depth chart at Ohio State. Oof, we're going position by position. We're going to attempt to predict the depth chart. Oh boy. Uh, a couple of notes real quick. Um, we are recording this. I believe I already gave it away with the Browns comment, although I don't think our, li- our uh, audio only listeners actually heard that. that so I'll, let me let me timestamp this real quick. Uh, it's a little past three o'clock on Sunday. Uh, the most recent, the most recent uh, news we got was Trey Sermon definitely going to the NFL. So that's the most recent, like super official announcement we received as far as who's going and who's staying at Ohio State. Uh, also, want to say that I'm not a hundred percent sure how. This past season, with it not counting towards eligibility, but all like, how does that affect? Like, is every did everyone just get a red shirt? I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work from a terminology standpoint. So we're not going to be using terms like uh, freshman, red shirt freshman, junior red shirt. So I, I I'm not. A, I don't know how all that's going to work. As far as from a, I know that this year basically just doesn't count, but how does that work from a terminology standpoint? I'm not sure. So we're, we're scrapping all of that and everyone is just going to be a, a fourth year player, a fifth year player. And we'll, 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 we'll leave it at that. So we're, we're dumping the traditional terminology for that. All right. So what do we have for sure here? We have here for sure who are leaving. Uh, we have Josh Myers, mm-hmm. Sean Wade, Trey Sermon, Drew Chrisman, and Blake. Blake Hobbell. Um, Those are the official ones. Now, I think we can safely assume Justin Fields. Yeah. Chris Olave. Yeah. White Davis. Justin Hilliard. Yep. Jonathan Cooper. Yeah. I thought I thought Borland declared already. I, I, I he did his senior day stuff, mm-hmm. which is a, a declaration of sorts, and he has accepted an invite to I believe the Senior Bowl, one of the postseason bowls. So mm-hmm. he's done both of those things. So it's easy to assume that he is leaving. But I don't believe he's actually like went to Twitter yet and dropped his, hey, Buckeye Nation, thank you, yada, 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 officially. That's that to me is what I'm treating as official official. Yeah, Uh, because let's not let's not forget Thayer Munford also did all of his virtual senior day stuff. And Thayer Munford also accepted a senior bowl invite and then announced he was returning. So. We're all assuming that a lot of these players are leaving based off of the virtual senior day versus versus the Mm -hmm. senior bowl invites, but that's not a hundred percent. So if anyone did that, we're assuming they're leaving, but know Mm -hmm. that that's not like a done, done deal as, as you know, we saw Thayer Munford prove. Yeah. And then the other leanings that we believe, um, are going to be leaving also is uh, Browning, Werner, Hoke, uh, Galvin Cup, and Antoine Jackson. Yeah, the, we're we're assuming that those players are leaving. 
That's mm-hmm. that's the most assumption those, moving forward. Most of those being like redshirt seniors or fifth year seniors. Well, and again, all of those people went through virtual senior day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, so that's the assumption. Here. Now returning here, Jared. Yeah. Ruckert, Tyreek Smith, Tojiai, and Has. Haskell, not Haskell, no. Haskell Garrett. Yeah, those are people who we believe, who we think are returning. Mm. Uh, that's the assumption we're making for the depth chart preview. That mm. is not a done deal for any of those four individuals. And unless, of course, you're a member of the Buckeye Scoop, then you know at least one of those people. Oh, how's that for a how's that for a tease for our corporate overlords? Uh, <laughs> you know that one of those people is confirmed returning but i'm not going to tell you who you need to subscribe to the buckeye scoop and then we have here under confirmed we have munford they are that's probably the biggest name Abs- the biggest surprise too that's that's a just that's pretty much like a sean wade type of announcement that we saw last year where it's like oh sean wade's coming back that's great for for having some a wonderful surprise it's a wonderful surprise, yes. So Munford, uh, we're assuming that NPF is returning, Seven Banks, and Marcus Williamson. Yeah, those are all ass- those are all assumed returns, except for as Kyle said, Thayer Munford, who is a confirmed return. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and yes. like just just to reiterate, we are assuming for the sake of this depth chart that Rucker, Tyreek Smith, Toji, and Garrett are also returning. Yes. So with all of that. Yes. That's a lot of preamble. It's a lot of preamble. (laughs) All right. Now let's break it down for the positions here, Jared. All right. Well, let's let's start with everyone's favorite position, the quarterback. Yes. Kyle, this is the first time we've had an open quarterback battle at Ohio State since the spring of 2018. By the time we got to the fall of 2018, Burrow was in Louisiana and the job was Haskins. Yep. But in the spring of 2018 was the last time we had a quarterback battle. So, Kyle, who do you like? Well, I think at this point, based off of who we saw in not necessarily mop-up duty, because we didn't really see really much of any like mop-up duty this year for Ohio State, but the player who's seen the occasional time in at quarterback is CJ Stroud. Now, Kyle, let me, let me say this. I believe we saw two scenarios in which they actually pulled fields early this year. In the, the first game, it was Miller that came in. In the second game, it was CJ Stroud that came in. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure no one was making any assumptions about anything. Now, I want to point out that during the Sugar Bowl, when Justin Fields got hurt and had to come off the field for one play, it was C.J. Stroud that came in. Mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud, according to most people within the know, uh, are are telling us that C.J. Stroud seems to be the leader in the clubhouse. But. But. Michigan Buckner is upset that he can't type fast enough. But, Kyle, I do not want to rule out with a full spring practice and a freshman five-star quarterback coming in. I don't want to hand the job to C.J. Stroud. Is that the safe money? If you forced me to put $1,000 on one name, I'm putting that money on C.J. Stroud. But Mm -hmm. do not consider this a done deal. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. It's we got a going to get a three way battle, just kind of like what we saw in 2018. But yep, <laughs> see, the difference being is that none of them took a snap. Yes. Miller, Stroud, and McCord. So yeah. Early early signs show C.J. Stroud, but obviously anything can change, and hopefully hopefully with Fields leaving, assuming. Yes. Most likely. And and Hoke leaving, assuming. It, yep, and Hoke as well. These quarterbacks are going to need every snap that they can get to get accustomed to this offense here. Yeah, and uh, one of the things you have to watch out for is 
Well, here's okay. So I want I want to say something. Michigan Bucknut says, "LOL, Hoke is a non-factor." Is he? I'm not saying he's going to start. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. But if Hoke does leave, which we're assuming he is, Ohio State's going to need to look at the transfer portal because if if CJ Stroud wins the job early on. Does Miller hang around for an entire year? And then you only have two scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. I, it's something to keep an eye on. Where does Jack where does Jack Miller think he is on the depth chart compared to the other two players at the end of spring practice? Because if he doesn't, because if he feels like he's third, or if he feels like he's nowhere near Stroud, he might put himself in the portal. So where does how how does Hoke play into this? Assuming Hoke leaves, which we are, Ohio State's going to have to go to the portal and find another Hoke, another Chug, another, you know, fourth fifth year quarterback who's happy to start a graduate degree program at Ohio State and start mm-hmm. you're in with excuse me with no hopes realistic hopes of starting. Those guys are out there, but Ohio State, I think, is probably going to have to go find another Hoke. And I think that they will. All right, Jared. Running back. Running back is going to we be... We both said C.J. Stroud, by the way. What is that? Are we bo- did we both pick C.J. Stroud? Yes. Okay. All right. Running back. Running back is a very crowded position here. Definitely can't social distance themselves here. No, sir. <laughs> It is very, very close quarters here. Teague, Crowley, Chambers, Williams, Henderson, and Pryor. Yeah, uh, this is incredibly interesting. Uh, you will see transfers. We don't project. We don't project transfers. So that, that's 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 just sort of a because I don't want anyone interpreting that as me saying this player doesn't deserve to be here. I feel like that's rude. And that's just, that's a line I don't cross with scholarship, non-paid athletes. So I I don't want to transfer anyone on their behalf. That's not a thing I want to do. But uh, there will be transfers out of this room. Uh, There's too many names in here. And the two freshmen coming in are both incredibly highly hyped. Henderson and Pryor I think is entirely possible that we see one of these players getting legitimate snaps next year. And for that matter, we saw a true freshman get snaps this year in Mayan Williams. So where does that leave Crowley and Chambers? Where does that leave, you know, where, how, how do the third and fourth year players, Teague Crowley Chambers, how do they stack up against the second and first year players in Williams, Henderson, and Pryor? Because I think this is wide open. Look, I really I, do. I completely, completely agree. And that's why a spring practice would mean a lot more for these younger kids like Chambers. We saw Williams a little bit in the previous games, but definitely more so for Henderson and Pryor coming in as well. Absolutely. I, I I don't know what to do with the running backs. Uh, I think Master Teague's the starter until proven otherwise. So I think that's going to be, I'm going to say Teague one, Williams two, Henderson three. Yeah. I mean, looking back at, look, look how shocked we were because we didn't know about the running back position uh, a few years ago against Indiana. And all of a sudden, we see this true freshman come in by the name of J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, we we're like, like, oh, that's not good. We're starting a true freshman here. That's that's doesn't bode well with our running back group. And he had a heyday. Yeah. <laughs> he he went nuts against Indiana that game. So could it be Henderson or Pryor this year? There's always that chance. Yeah, but I, 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 think, I think I still I st- I definitely agree with Jared here. At this point, the nod is to Teague based off of experience and what we've seen from Teague. But any of these players could just have a spectacular spring practice 
And, and, and I would once again point out that Kyle and I are projecting the depth chart for week one mm-hmm. of next season. Well, not, at the, at this point, not week yeah, 10 at, of next season. So at this point, it's the nod to Teague right now. I no, I agree. I, I still think I still think Teague definitely needs a lot of work. And we've every everybody, Buckeye Nation's been critical of him. I think the biggest thing that I would like to see Teague improve on, and I think if he improves it in this one particular part of his game, he would be a spectacular running back next year. And that's driving your driving your feet. When he, I, yeah. when he gets when he gets hit, it, it it just seems like his feet just stop moving, and then he just gets just doesn't get that extra yardage that we saw Sermon towards the end of the season, where he was just bouncing off people and just kept just kept those feet moving to get those extra yardage. Yeah, and I I, I do want to remind everyone because there does seem to be a lot of Master Teague angst out there. I'd like to remind everyone that up until the Northwestern game, we all considered him RB1. Up until the Northwestern game, we all considered Master Teague to be the better running back between him and Sermon. Yes. I just want to throw that out there. That was the consensus opinion at that time. Mm-hmm. Yep. All Wide right. receivers, probably, Kyle. Was that? Wide receivers. Yes. Probably even more difficult. <laughs> than the running backs possibly so here we go uh who who, who do you have here to it, start there's a lot there's a pick? lot of bodies in here first and foremost there's a lot of body bodies we got um uh, gardner harris uh bob williams wilson g <laughs> scott fleming jsn ballard Egbuka, and harrison jr yeah, it's it's crazy. And like Kyle, I, not not that we're holding out any hope that Chris Olave returns, which we're not. But Kyle doesn't even mention Chris Olave. I have or no you idea. Call, I, have, I, call too. I, I, I have no idea what's going on with McCall. I've just not heard anyone talk about it, which is weird. Well, there, there's a lot of rumors in here. He said or whatever regarding to some some videos that were posted to and all that. And yeah. that the only time, even, even when, even when Teague went down and even for backup duties too, for a sermon, nothing with McCall either. He's technically listed as a wide receiver right now, but uh, anyway, uh, Again, I think you look at this room, you look at this roster, and I think it's uh, a fair assumption to make that there's going to be some transfers out of this room. Uh, mm-hmm. That being said, I expected a lot of transfers out of this room before this season started. Now, does COVID change? Did COVID change that equation for these players? Not losing a year of eligibility, so on and so forth, potentially. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think I, think I, right I now, do. Th- I do think that a lot. I do think that multiple players. We'll say multiple, two or more, of the names that Kyle mentioned will see transfer out this year. So, as far as starting, I would think I would give the nod first and foremost. First and foremost to Wilson. Yeah, that that that's a given. Uh, I would also give the nod to Williams. I, I believe, especially if we're talking week one, absolutely. And I would, if you put in a third wide receiver as well, I think I would give the nod currently to um, NJ, excuse me, JSN. Yeah, Smith and Jimba, uh, I think is, and I don't have snap counts to prove this, but I do believe he's the freshman we saw the most of mm-hmm. during the season. And I, so based on that, I feel like that's probably an indicator of what the coaching staff thinks. And, and we did see, and we did see some of Fleming as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Season. And and we, and and we saw G Scott at sometimes too, but to what degree? I I think we saw Smith and Jimba the most. Yep. So based on that, I would probably. So if you're going three wide receivers in a three wide receiver set, you have. Obviously, three wide receivers starting. I'm going to say JSN, Wilson, and Williams are your three starting wide receivers. Yep. And if we may, and if we turn that into a two deep, 
I'm going to say Scott Fleming and Abuka are your next three. Completely, I completely agree. No, no arguments. Yeah, here. and just just going to say this: Mookie Cooper has has already transferred out, so that that's already happened. I uh, Missouri, I believe, is where he went. Is that yeah, correct? Missouri. Yeah. So he he's on his way to Missouri. Uh, Michigan Bucknet confirms for us that yes, it is in fact Missouri. Uh, so yeah, he's he's on his way to to Missouri. So that's already one transfer out of this room. Expect more. Mm-hmm. Yep. Kyle, All is right. it time? Tight, tight end, Jared. Yeah, let's tight. do tight ends first. We'll we'll do the ads. We'll do the ads after tight end. Yep, tight ends here, Jared. We are assuming Hauserman and Farrell are gone. I think we forgot to mention them okay. before we started. Uh, what's that? Hausman. Yes. Excuse me. What year is it? <laughs> and Farrell, too. Yep. Those two were assuming he's gone. over for me, Kyle. <laughs> now, Ruckert. I, I truly believe Ruckert will be back next year. That's he, the he'll... assumption we're working on, but we don't mm-hmm. know that yet. Yes. And so the others to fill in as well, because we've seen a lot of two tight end sets, and maybe maybe that was for just the scheme against the teams that Ohio State played. But we saw a lot of two tight end sets. So will we see more of Stover, Royer, or even um, incoming Hart as well? I, I think it'll be interesting. Uh, I, I do. I think. What, uh, okay, so let me back this up. We saw a lot of two tight end sets out of Ohio State this year, as Kyle said. Is that going to be a thing we continue to see with this glut of wide receivers and a lack of tight ends? Do we see more three wide receiver, one tight end versus two wide receiver, two tight end? I think is 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 a, a question worth discussing. Um, I also think that Ohio State looks to the portal for a tight end. I, I think that they moved they moved Stover over to offense. He's not he was not a uh, he was not recruited as a tight end. So mm-hmm. we see Stover move from defense over to tight end. Do, is he even going to be there at this time or well by September of next year, or does he get moved back over to play defense again? I don't know. Uh, I would guess he stays on the tight end side, but I don't know. I do look for Ohio State to look towards the portal to bring in another tight end. Mm -hmm. Someone to be the backup to Ruckert. And if Ruckert doesn't stay, they're going to have to go to the portal because you're then at that point, you have, excuse me, you have uh, Cade Stover, who's a third-year player but not a native tight end. Royer, who got no snaps this year as a true freshman, will be going into his second year, and then, as Kyle said, true freshman heart coming in. It's just, it's not it's not a lot of depth in the tight end room. Look for them to make a move in the portal here. Yeah, that one's going, that one's going to be really interesting, but... If if Rucker does declare, that's that's a huge concern for Ohio State going into twenty twenty one as well. But I we're making the assumption that Rucker is returning, though. Yeah, but I, I think they have to go to the por- I think they have to go to the portal regardless. But it be you know they might have to go to the portal twice if if Rucker's gone. Yes. Kyle, is it time right. to hear from our sponsors? Yeah, let's do that. Just because. Yeah, let's go hear from. Sponsors here before we go on to the slobs. Yeah. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I told you why you should buy from them in the first ad read. Let's let's look at some of their coffees now. Uh, some people are into flavored coffees and some people aren't, and that's okay. But the Iron Bean Coffee Company has you covered regardless. They have flavored coffees, they have unflavored coffees. Some of the flavored coffees they have are the mom's carrot cake. It's it's carrot cake flavored i think you i don't think i had to say that i think i think my listeners i think our listeners are smart enough to have deciphered that the intense blueberry which is flavored like lemon no not lemons blueberries and the mint chocolate chip 
which is, of course, a minty, chocolatey, might as well call it a junior mint coffee. And if none of that sounds like the right thing for you, and maybe you're the adventurous type, I would recommend the unicorn. What flavor is the unicorn? I don't know, and neither do you. You won't find out until you get it. And even then, they might not tell you, so you just kind of have to guess. Uh, it's their mystery bag. It's their R&D coffee, uh, small passion projects, experimentations, one-time roast, potentially. You just never know what's going to be in the unicorn, and that's part of the fun. Uh, and if you're not into flavored coffees, they have a big selection of those, too. I'll tell you more about those in the third ad read, or you can just check out the website yourself at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought, also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian, what, what have we not said about it? Great seasonings, um, all made locally here in Ohio, um, in near Finley, Ohio, Cary, Ohio, to be exact. Uh, Mad Canadian has 14 seasonings currently available over at his website. Again, the madcanadianbbq.com. Um, or if you want some of his um, freshly made, cooked, not cooked, grilled uh, barbecue. <laughs> barbecue. You can check out you can check out his social medias to figure out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Um, he goes to different places in Ohio, most likely northwest Ohio, but he's he's kind of ventured off to the northeast as well too. But be sure to check out the Med Canadian social medias, Facebook, Twitter, to see where he is headed to next. Um, some of the seasonings here, Jared. Some of the seasonings that I've used recently. Uh, I've used the four horsemen. I used the four horsemen on a Buffalo chicken pizza, very spicy, but I like me a spicy pizza though. <laughs> uh, or if you don't want as spicy, you can go with the snoring heat. One of my all time favorites, um, uh, very versatile seasoning, chicken, fish, even burgers. It's a really good, uh, versatile seasoning or even the carry steak as well goes Pretty much great on anything as well, too. Um, check out those and the other great seasonings over at the madcanadianbbq.com. That is madcanadianbbq.com. And I see here that Michigan Bucknut shared us shared a picture of some meat he's getting ready to um, to grow here. And right, on, right next to it is some carry steak seasoning. Yeah, I, I, I wish our little chat window down there had the ability to uh show pictures because that looks amazing <laughs> sorry sorry everyone who isn't us <laughs> be sure to use the promo code slukast 10 slukast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered okay kyle offensive line the slobs speaking Ky of very crowded position I don't want to name all these. There is way too many slobs here. What is that? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 17 slobs. Yeah. And that's not counting Cup, Davis, and Myers, who are all, well, one definitely gone, two presumed gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Thayer Munford, of course, returns. Uh, as Kyle said, there's a lot of names here. And Probably not going to name them all, but Kyle, who do you think starts? Get... Munford. Uh, okay, that's that, that's a given. Um, NPF, who uh, Nicholas Petit Ferry, uh, who is a presumed returner. Uh, he, those are our two tackles. I, I I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. Great. Harry Miller is your center. Third year yeah. Harry Miller going to be your center. Now. That's 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 probably the easiest ones right there. <laughs> Michigan Bucknut uh, points out that Paris Johnson Jr. will be a starter. Um, yep. I think you. I feel like the popular opinion right now is that he's going to be the starting right guard. I personally have him at left guard. Now, am I right? Almost never. Just so we're clear. <laughs> Almost never. But. I, that's where I'm putting him. I'm putting him at right guard, not left guard. Mm -hmm. So, Kyle, I, who's... I, I don't even know who else, like, 
I mean, you got other ones in here. You got Ray. You got a pair of Jones as well. <laughs> and your 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 two Joneses, along with um, Vamahi, I, I think are your three people competing for that last spot. Now, if Paris Johnson Jr. is going to be focusing at guard, that he's naturally a tackle. But if his focus is going to be at guard this year, maybe you want to make sure Dwan Jones, who's also naturally a tackle, is ready to fill in at either of the tackle spots. So maybe that's a thing you're preparing for. So maybe, maybe at that point you're looking at not Dwan Jones at guard, but instead we're looking at Jones and Vamahi at guards. Those two competing for whatever the other guard spot is. Yeah, I this this position group, just kind of like the 2020 season, I feel very comfortable with pretty much anybody kind of filling in there. I think this is a very, very deep position here. Uh, I feel very comfortable if, uh, if for ever some reason a player goes down that we can – plug in somebody and not really notice much of a. Uh, I don't know, man. I I feel like there's only one. I I feel like they have. Two backups who I feel great about. Um, and, And I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything bad about any of the other players. I just don't know what Max Ray can do. You know what I mean? Maybe he actually is a really good backup. That's not me saying he isn't. That's me saying I don't know. You know, I don't know what Jacoby can do. That's not saying he's bad and that he can't play. I'm just saying that there's not a lot of experience there and I don't know what he can do. Now, so maybe I'm being maybe I'm being spoiled. Maybe maybe I'm being a little bit. But. I feel like Ohio State has five starters and two real solid backups right now and a bunch of guys who we just kind of have question marks at the, at, at, at the moment is kind of how I feel about the offensive line right now. And again, having a spring practice this yeah. year is going to be very critical for the development for a lot of these younger slobs. Yeah, and just outside of Paris Johnson, who... I, you know, we're, we're, we're slotting in at one of the guard positions outside of Paris Johnson. I don't see any of the other first or second year players contributing. Is, is that a fair thing to say? And that's a very good question too. And I wouldn't even know how to even really look at it, but when was the last time we had a freshman or even like, if you want to call even like a red shirt freshman too, started for Ohio state. Well, uh, Paris Johnson, did did he start? No, he was also out for the Michigan State game, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that, that is a good question. Did Thayer Munford start as a redshirt freshman? Is that, is that a I thing? I don't even know how to. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, Prince... Oh, um, did Prince as a red shirt freshman at right tackle potentially Michigan Bucknut? Is that what you're is that what you're asking? Um, uh, Kyle, you you threw me a question that requires research, and I don't know what to do with it. Michigan Bucknut seems to think that might have been a thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, was that, it? That's something, that, that's something to think about too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um. Uh, if any of these current incoming freshmen, uh, Chrisman, uh, Jackson, or Mikowski, if any of them going to see any time this year, but uh, no, I, I I don't think so. I, I think uh, Ben Chrisman is capable of it. I think he's a very good player. I think he would be, if absolutely required, I believe he could be very serviceable as a you know by true freshman standards. I. Uh, I just don't think it's going to, I don't think it'll be necessary. I don't think he'll be called upon to do that. I think Ohio State has a real solid top seven right now. And I just don't believe it'll be necessary otherwise. 
Kyle, we, we need to move on to the defense. All right. We're, we're, we're almost at minute 45. We need to move on to the defense. All right. Let's move on to the defensive slobs here. Uh, Cooper. Gone. I'm going to assume is gone here. Uh, so we have here, well, talking about the defensive ends here. Yeah. Friday, Smith, uh, Baptiste. We're assuming and, Smith is coming back. Yes. Baptiste and Harrison and Potter. I, th- I think we're, we're going to have a lot of great rotation, just yeah. kind of like what we did last year too. But the question is going to be too, are we going to have an an elite defensive end this year that we're so accustomed to at Ohio State? We didn't really get to see that last year, but are we going to see one this year? That that depends upon a lot. For I thought we saw Tyreek Smith really start to flash towards the end, and I think Ohio State missed him a lot against Bama. So I think Tyreek Smith could be very excellent this year. We're now seeing where we will be seeing the third year for both Harrison and Potter. Uh, two very highly touted guys coming out of high school. It's it's time. It's th- it's third year time. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's this. It's it, yeah, it's that's it. It's time. If you're Potter and if you're Harrison, it's time. These guys should be capable of that. We haven't seen it from them yet. And Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer is a true freshman coming in. Damn good. Damn, damn good. We're, we're talking. I've heard many people refer to him as either the third or fourth Bosa, depending upon if you want to include Chase Young in that line. So, yeah, our this is the fourth Bosa. If we're talking about Jack Sawyer, he is receiving that type of hype. I mean, he's he, he, he the is, next guy. I mean, he is Ohio State's best rated player from this recruiting class here. so far. He, the fourth nationally so far because we have a bit of a wild card in these defensive ends, Kyle JTT JTT is yes. not yet committed. He's not in our depth chart because he's not yet committed. We, we only put players in the depth chart prediction who are currently signed. He is not signed. Yep. Now he's coming in as a defensive end. He wants to play defensive end. I personally see him as a three tech defensive tackle, but we'll see. He's not even in the camp yet, so we'll see. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really like this defensive end coming in next year, even even if you do not even include JTT in there, too. Yeah. You add him in there, that's just that's just the cherry on top of yeah. this of this Sunday. Yeah, it, it's almost too much. It's almost yeah. too much. <laughs> All right. Defensive tackles here, Jared. Yeah. We're assuming wow. Antoine Jackson's gone. Yep. He, he's done the senior the the senior day stuff and all that. We're assuming he's gone. Haskell Garrett, we're assuming is returning. Mm-hmm. That he has not put out anything official yet. There's not been official social media Ohio State announcement on that yet. So, but we're we're making the assumption he's coming back. We're mm-hmm. also making the assumption Togi is coming back. Yes. Again, I mean, that's not you official. Pretty much have your you pretty much have your starters from last year coming back here, Garrett and and um, Toji I too. Yeah. And Hall, true freshman Hall coming in. Very good. Uh, maybe not a guy we see, especially if both Garrett and Togi I both stick yep. around. Maybe not a guy we see make a first year impact, but will definitely be involved. Teron Vincent, I have a lot of faith in. He'll be coming into his fourth year. And Paige, I think, is a guy who's kind of just been waiting his turn. And we'll be entering his fifth year. Ohio State's defensive tackles are are actually they're they're in good shape if they just keep one of Garrett or Togiai. But if they both come back, that's huge for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And and even keep an eye out for um Ty Hamilton too. I think I think he could really see some playing time too as as some rotation as well. Yeah, he'll be entering his second year. Again, another very highly touted defensive lineman for Ohio State. Yep. All right, linebackers here. Uh, oh, we boy. Got, we have we a whole new, a just, all new faces here. All right, here, here's, here's all of your linebackers. We're just going to put them over here. <laughs> what if I we take all of the linebackers right here. and we shove them over here? <laughs> Gotta love a SpongeBob meme. Uh, all yeah. right. Uh, so we, we're assuming yeah. Borland, Browning, Hilliard, Warner, all gone. Yep. And then in come Gant, Mitchell, Pope, Young. 
Eichenberg, Eichen- Simon, Melton, yeah. and then true freshman Carrico and Johnson. A lot of just I think it's a lot of a lot of raw talent here. I think I think I raw. I don't know is, how is, raw it is. Like we haven't seen these guys on the field a lot, but Gant is coming into his fourth year. Mitchell is fourth year. Pope his fourth year. Young his third year. Eichenberg his third year. These guys aren't that raw. They're maybe just a little unknown to us. And well, I should you, I should say raw as in as in real game experience. Yeah, and again, you have Carico who's coming in as a true freshman. I think will demand attention. Simon was a freshman this year, going to be a second year player next year. Is good enough to demand attention. So Mm -hmm. we look. There's five players who are upperclassmen, either fourth or third year players. There five of them. I I don't know that they all are on the team come September. Right. Well, who who do you think here? And this is probably a lot to ask for, Jared. Who who would you put as of right now? Your starting linebackers. Your three linebackers. I feel like Gant and Pope are the only two I would swear on. And then I, I almost want to put Simon in there as the third guy. Here's the, I'm not a hundred percent sure because we haven't seen them on the field a ton. Like who does the coaching staff consider a Mike versus a will, you know, are, are one of these guys going to be more the bullet position? There's a lot of unknowns because there's been this wall of seniors, Borland, Browning, Hilliard, Warner. And we've just these players who I think had they received better coaching a couple years ago, everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. Had they received better coaching a few years ago would have left early at some point. So you kind of have this backlog at the linebacker position. And I, I just I don't know enough about these guys coming in, to be honest with you. Um, Gant and Pope are the two I'm really keeping an eye on right now, but I'm also, I have to plead a certain degree of ignorance as far as the linebackers go. Mm-hmm. How, yeah, how do you, how do you of, see yeah, it? I, w- I would definitely, uh, Gant and Pope, I would think I would put Gant and Pope there. Man, yeah, that third, that third one, I might... I, I just might just give the nod to your as much as a lot of people hated hates to hear this, I'd probably give the the upper classmen <laughs> the nod here in Mitchell. I mean I just I, I just want the best three. Mm-hmm. I kind of don't even like I said, I don't necessarily know how these guys will slot in Mike Will and uh Sam, but I I also just kind of don't care <laughs> at this point. Like I just kind of want the best three guys in there. Um, mm-hmm. Kyle, did we actually pick, uh, the, I, I think the assumption for defensive tackle is, is Garrett and Toshia. If we're, if we're saying they're coming back, we're saying they're starting. Did we pick two for defensive ends? Cause I'm going to go Smith and Harrison with Potter and Friday as the backups. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I have Smith and Harrison then as your backups, I would have Potter and um oh who would you put in there? Probably, Friday, uh, Jean Baptiste, Hamilton probably are probably the JP in there. Okay. All right. Um corners. Let's see. Corners. Corners. Sean Wade corners. That's official. What's that? Sean Wade is gone and that's official. Yes. All right, so we have here, we have Williamson coming in for his fifth year. Uh, Banks, And by the way, that's an assumption. We don't know that Williamson will be there. Okay. Banks, we assume, is coming back. Uh, Brown, Johnson, Watts. um, Cavos. I can never pronounce it right. (laughs) Yeah, it's all right. Martinez, Burke, Hancock, and Johnson. Uh, This is wide open to me. I do feel like Banks and Brown are going to enter camp as your starters. Mm -hmm. But I also think that based off of what we saw this year, and by the Mm -hmm. way, Banks, I want to say this. 
Banks started the year, started this, started the 2020 season very poorly, got picked on a lot, did not look good, look lost at times. He, to me, looked like a different player week one to week six. Mm -hmm. So I I just want to point that out. I feel like he made really nice um, development through the course of the year. And I'd like to, I think that will continue. So I like seven banks a lot. Cam Brown, we have to see where he's at with his injury. You know, that's, it was, he he blew his um, Achilles. Is that right, Kyle? That's difficult to come back from. So we're, we'll see. We'll see. Um, But the, I, I really want to see Burke and Hancock Kavos, Martinez, Watts. I want. I do want to see these guys fighting for time. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think as you're starting, as you're starting DBs, yeah, I would put Banks and Brown in there. Now, right. if if they're rolling with a third corner, I would I would like to see it be either. I think I think Kavos is the guy I'd like to see as the third corner. Yep. Kavos or even maybe even Watts too. So I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be mad if it was Hancock. <laughs> All right. Our safeties, Jared. Safeties. Uh Proctor's your guy. Uh, yep. again, much like seven banks. I I like the progress that Proctor made from week one to week six, week mm-hmm. seven, week eight. So I, I I think Proctor's made some incredibly good strides. I think he, he improved a lot, and I think he gets your number one safety coming into next year. Yep. And I think I I think a surprise here for me, I, I think we'll see probably a lot of ransom next year. The, I, a lot of a lot of good things that we um, saw as a recruit, Michigan Buck from ransom. Cruz. I I really think that we potentially could see a good amount of ransom this year. I wanted to see more of ransom this year. So if that tells you how much I agree with you, Kyle, <laughs> I wanted to see, cause he, he played a lot during the Michigan state game where Ohio state was missing a ton of players. And I yeah, thought he no, looked real good. Granted it was Michigan state, but I thought he looked really good. Yes. And I, I do. I want to see more. I want to see more. Mm-hmm. Yep. Another, but I, another I still think Proctor's, is, Proctor's is the number Booker. one guy, and I wonder if you see Ransom maybe more in a bullet-esque role. Mm, yep. Another guy in there, too. Familiar last name, Hooker, as well, too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. I think... I think that is all the positions here. It is. I, I, think, I think the defensive backs are loaded with really good second year players. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how Watts, Cavos, Martinez, Ransom, Court Williams. I'm really interested to see what those young guys can do. You know, it was really, really hard to get too many freshmen on the field this year because of 2020 and all of the things that is and was 2020. So I'm really interested to see what those five players can contribute this upcoming season for mm-hmm. a secondary, for a pass defense that was very, very bad this year. What can those second year players do? Mm-hmm. And even if they aren't starting, how do they contribute? And can they push the third and fourth year players to be better? Or just outright take their spots, or it, even if they don't take over the starting spots, how many snaps can they take away from those older guys? Yes, and I, I think that is what I'm looking forward to seeing from the secondary this year. I don't think who's starting is all that interesting, especially week one. Week one, I don't think who's starting is all that interesting. I think what will be interesting is. How many snaps are the young guys taking away from the older guys? Mm-hmm. Yes. I really, really like the 
not not the recruiting class that just signed, but the previous recruiting class. I also like the recruiting class that just signed. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not talking about the true freshmen quite yet. I'm talking about the second year players. I like that group of defensive backs a lot, a lot. And I, I'm just really eager to see what they can do on the field, especially after the struggles that Ohio State's secondary had in 2020. Mm, yeah. All right. A couple of questions here. I'm just trying to skim through these because a lot of these we already kind of answered already. Uh, Stuart underscore E4 US vet asks, Jared, what will be, what will be the determined determination factor in the new QB one? Grasp of the offense, which is one of the reasons why I, I'm not heavily considering McCord as a potential starter for this year. Mm -hmm. I I think it's going to be tough for the true freshmen to compete with the two second year players when understanding the offense is such a big piece of it. Mm -hmm. From a talent standpoint, he might be the best of the three but he's a year behind and I don't know if he can overcome that. Mm, Yep. Uh, Does from Buckeye underscore Zach, does Meyer or who does Meyer in the Jaguars pick number one? Is it still Trevor or do you see Meyer uh, or could Justin end up in Jacksonville? I wouldn't rule it out, but I would, if I had to bet money on it, I'd say Trevor Lawrence. Yep. No, absolutely. He, I, he be, just projects be better totally to the pro, shocked. in my opinion. I'd be totally shocked if 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 uh, Fields gets picked number one. I want I want to say this. I want to say this. Trevor Lawrence projects amazingly to the pros for many many reasons, but also that Urban Meyer actually doesn't have any relationship with Justin Fields. I just he. Ryan Day recruited Fields to Ohio State basically the moment Urban Meyer left. I just just want to point that out real quick. There, there's no relationship between Urban Meyer and Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Also, Urban Meyer is not the GM and he doesn't get the final decision. That's, that's also my, huge. That's my first thought. That's my first thought. He gets input on the decision. He does not get the decision. Mm -hmm. All right. Austin Formation asks us, Jared, what song would you use to describe last season? Oh, that's, that is, that is far too open-ended. Oh, good God. Uh, If you need more time to research this, feel free to push this to next week. Next week, next week, next week. (laughs) All right. Bail, bail, bail. (laughs) All right, let's see here. Uh, we answered that question there. Uh, yeah, uh, Cedar19 uh, <laughs> asked Cooper, about the running Just back call him Cooper. I don't know how you pronounce that. Just call him Cooper. All right, Cooper asks us, do we, do we still think the same running back will finish the season um, from like last year? We kind of, we assuming that it's, it's um teagues to lose at this point um i think pretty much all of these others who kind of answered up uh, uh kyle what, what was the actual question i feel like you trailed off there so he says here well he started off who do you guys think will be the starting will start the season at running back and what will be the workload for the back i think it like, it'll up do we think the same back will finish the season i believe if i had to place money on it I think Teague is either solid RB1 in week one or he transfers. I think those are the two options in play. And I don't I don't blame Teague for that. I think Teague deserves to be a starting running back somewhere. If things shake out differently for him in the spring, he might leave. And I, I would support that decision if that's how that plays out. But if he is the starter, I believe he receives, especially if we're talking about week one, I believe he receives 80 or more percentage of the carry. And I also think that we would see that number decline as the true freshmen become more ready and start taking snaps as the season goes on. 
Mm-hmm. Completely agree. I think, I think, yeah, I completely agree. T gets the majority of the snaps and depending on the, the development of the younger running backs, we could potentially see more of Williams, Henderson, Chambers, Crowley's, just depending on development. Yeah, I think this is a really good question from Stuart uh, underscore E4US vet. Will Munford returning uh, create a log jam developing the tackles? Could it hurt recruiting for future tackles, seeing other players be held up on the roster? Yeah, I think all of that's possible. Uh, if if you're looking forward to 2022, you go from replacing one tackle to replacing two tackles, which stinks. In 2022, which is a year I think Ohio State is setting up for a national title run. In 2022, you'll be replacing both offensive tackles. Good news, one of those guys will be Paris Johnson Jr. And he'll have plenty of snaps under his belt already, even if those snaps are at guard. So that, that's the good news. You have your, you'll have your left tackle ready to go. That's kind of why I think they put Paris Johnson Jr. at left guard, by the way. So that when the time comes, he just bounces out a spot. That That's why I think left guard when a lot of other people are saying right guard for Paris Johnson Jr. I could be wrong. It's fine. So it does kind of hurt because at that point you have Max Ray, who's not had a ton of now he's your right tackle. Or is it Dwan Jones, who's not had a ton of snaps? At ta- you're basically at that point, you're starting two new tackles. And that kind of stinks for 2022. But you also have a true freshman quarterback, or excuse me, a redshirt freshman quarterback with his first starts, having both his blind side and and the right side tackle be maybe the best tackle combo in the entire country. And that's huge for a first year quarterback. So it hurts the future, but it's great for the present. And that's just how college football works sometimes. Yes, absolutely. I think that's pretty much all the questions. Every, most of these others are just, we've already kind of answered it throughout the episode here. Oh, so. I think there's another good one from Stuart, Kyle. Percentage right. that JTT comes to Ohio State. JT Tui, Mo, Tui Molau. Mm, almost had it. Almost. I, almost had it. Um. I think Ohio State feels very good about it. He's a uh, JTT is a very hard read. He really only talks to one recruiting analyst. It's hard to say anything for JTT with a high level of certainty. But I know that the people within Ohio State feel good about it. So I give it like an 85% that he comes to Ohio State. 80, 85. And, I, and I'm just never going to put it higher than that until... An insider tells me to think otherwise, because I he's a very hard read. Yeah, I mean, you you, you try to look at anything here, and nothing's moved. He talks to nothing. one, he talks to one recruiting analyst. Um, his name's escaping me, but he's like the premier twenty four seven sports guy for the for the Northwest. Uh, Huffman. Is that his name? But he's Brandon. like the premier. Yes, Brandon, Brandon Huffman. Yes. He's the premier recruiting analyst for that region of the country. That's the only guy who he talks to. And if you want any kind of inside, the last thing he said was back in May of last year where he gave a prediction of him going to Ohio State with a... Uh, confidence whatever, score of one. Confidence score of one. <laughs> yeah. But I like Ohio State's chances. But he's he's just a kid that plays this stuff very close to the vest. Some kids like to go on social media and play games. He's not one of those kids. Yep. But percentage on JTT to Ohio State, I still I still say eighty percent. I still think I eighty I still, eighty-five. Yeah, I still I still think there's a very good shot for Ohio State to land JTT as well. So I'll put it at eighty. All right. Um, I think. Um. Did we did we at least get a question from everyone who asked? Awesome information. 
Uh, what's the most random trivia fact that you know? Uh, I'll say this. Dr. S Dr. Seuss's name is not Dr. Seuss. We've been mispronouncing it this entire time. It's actually pronounced Dr. Soyce. As in soy sauce? Rhymes with voice. Dr. Seuss's last name actually rhymes with voice. Mm -hmm. It's Dr. Soyce. Now, if you want to go around telling people that while pushing up your glasses, go right ahead. I still just keep mispronouncing it because I, just, I don't want to be that guy. Oh, have you have you read Dr. Seuss? Who, I'm, I'm sorry, who? Dr. <laughs> Seuss. Who's Dr. Seuss? He wrote Green Eggs and Ham. You mean Dr. Seuss? Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually pronounced Dr. Seuss. Like no one wants to be that guy at the party. <laughs> So I just keep mispronouncing it along with everybody else. But that that's an actual true fact, and you can look it up. Kyle, do you have a random piece of trivia? Not really. Okay. Not really. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I, so that's I don't it. think about it. Let's let's end the episode. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to check out thesloopcast.com. It has links to all of our stuff. Uh, just all of it. Yeah. Social media stuff, Patreon stuff. Discord stuff, uh, just uh, our sponsors, our T-shirt stores. I'm I'm wearing something. This is the uh, this is this is me calling Harbaugh Hitler. Essentially, is what's happening here. Uh, Kyle and I are both wearing Sloopcast merch right now. Uh, you can also check out our 7071 store, which has a bunch of like Yay Ohio type merchandise. It, you know, Kyle, I probably just need a shirt that says Yay Ohio. Yay. <laughs> I'll make it in Cooper black. Everything will be fine. Uh, but that, that, so if you want like to support us by buying some of our merch, you can go to 7071, all the numbers, just numbers, 7071.thesloopcast.com uh, and find some cool stuff there. Or like I said, you can just link to it by going to thesloopcast.com. Um, that's it. That's all the talking I feel like doing. Join our Discord, support us on Patreon, maybe buy a t shirt. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, I was trying to pull it up here, but I can't find it. <laughs> I was looking up um, um, our good, our good um, friend Quinn Ewers. Okay. Oh yes, 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 yes. Quinn Ewers. He had a, he had a, he had a great game this weekend. All right, here he he passed for. Again, this is in um, in the playoffs. 350 yards and three touchdowns this last weekend. Did That's, they win that game? That was the that was his state title game, was it not? Yeah, I don't think he they did. I'm I'm trying to pull that up here. I don't I don't feel like they did because <laughs> even though he threw he threw uh, Michigan uh, Yeah, here. Michigan Bucknut says they lost. Michigan Bucknut says they yes. lost. Yeah. Yep, they lost 34 to 27. And nope, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I can't find it either way. Um, <laughs> yeah, th dude threw for 350 and three touchdowns in a highly competitive uh high school playoff game. Again, like we said before, and we'll still say it even today, the future for Ohio State is bright. There you go. As always, right, the future that's all, got, that's all I got today. Well, and just just real quick on yours. A lot of people are really worried that Sarkeesian to Texas. Yes. I'm I'm not worried. That's that's all I'm gonna I'm not worried about it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the entire tweet. I'm I'm fine. I'm not I am not worried about it at all. You can continue to worry about viewers. There's a lot of time between now and the next national signing day and a lot of stuff can happen, but from what I know right now, I'm just going to tell you that I'm not scared. <laughs> all right, Kyle, anything else in Kyle's corner? Nope. We're all good here. All right. Uh, want to, uh, nope. We already, we already did that. Uh, so yeah, I think it's time just to end the show. Uh, tonight's ending music will be by a band called fields and planes. That's the name of the band. The name of the song is Never Let Me Go. 
And uh, that's it. That's that's our ending music. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Fields and Plains. Michigan Bucknut says Quinn already squashed that and he's going to squash it publicly right up until the point that either a he decommits or B he signs. And that's just the reality of being a highly touted recruit. There will be every month. There'll be a new rumor that Quinn in Texas is a thing again. Mm-hmm. And that's just the thing we're going to have to get used to. Yep. This is a little bonus commentary for our YouTube and Discord folk. It's just it's just a thing we got to we're going to have to deal with it for a year. There'll all there'll be a new rumor about Quinn in Texas or Quinn and Oklahoma or Quinn and Alabama and we're just going to have to, we're going to live with those rumors for a year. That that's that's just the reality of the situation. And that's that's it. If he take, I tell you what, you guys can be. Don't be worried unless he actually takes a visit. If he takes a, an official visit somewhere, then you can come and ask me if you're worried. Up until then, my answer is don't be worried. Don't worry about what things are said. Don't worry about the things said. Worry about the actions taken. So until he, LG is going to join us for the last minute of the, of the show. Hi, LG. Yes, I'm talking to you. Lay on your pillow. You're fine. Or sneeze. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's a good girl. All right, uh, Kyle, time to end the show. Let's do it. I would once again like to thank Fields and Plains for ending today's episode. And I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, world-class, hand-roasted, fresh-to-order coffee based out of toledo ohio uh you can get a lot of great coffees there for example there's the rage against the dying of the light uh it's a medium roast coffee with notes of cherry and milk chocolate the rider die it's a gentle distinctive version of the american classic breakfast cup has brazilian yellow bourbon coffee beans the cast iron which is a medium roast uh made with 100 percent honduran arabica beans Uh, There's the drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, That is a dark roast, traditional Indonesian coffee. Uh, It's it's smoky. uh, It's creamy. It's chocolatey. It's it's has a bunch of great notes in it. Uh, The fear no evil. uh, This one's not even a dark roast. It's a black roast. It's roasted to the brink of flames and has a really nice smooth texture. The integrity, which is like the flagship roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company, and uh, it is the like, it's yeah, it's the mainstay iron bean coffee uh, makes a great espresso. You can. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying right now, Michigan Bucknut. You can see all of these coffees and even more coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friend over at the Mad Canadian BBQ Company. Mad Canadian has 14 great, great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Some of our favorites that we'd like to give a shout out here the Coffee and Q, the Smoked Two Border, the Discord. Shout out to our fellow Discord. Patreons and followers and the old fashioned. Be sure to check out those and the other great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social media pages over at Twitter and Facebook to check out where him and his food truck will be heading to next. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered.